This is the story of how we dominated a Minecraft server's economy with nothing but mushroom stew. Server's name is World of Elden, a server that's been running since 2012 and is full of seasoned players. But we were determined to become the Jeff Bezos <laughs> of the server, no matter what. Now, World of Elden has some unique features that make it completely different from all the other girls. Firstly, they have very limited teleportation, requiring the access to a town or city to be able to teleport to different locations, and and every time you do slash home, that has a cooldown of three hours. Unless you want to reenact the Oregon Trail each and every time you want to sell a single piece of coal. And if that wasn't bad enough, each town can only have a few types of server shops based on what they decide to upgrade their town into. For example, if you want your town to buy gold, you have to build a smeltery. If you want it to buy fish, you have to build a dock, and so on. There's only one single way to get more shops in your town, and that's by getting players to buy land in your town, which takes boo koodles of money, and the bigger your population is in your town, the better your prices, and the better your prices, the more people want to live in your town. This means that the biggest cities end up with all the players and thus end up monopolizing server shops with the best prices. This makes it not worth creating smaller towns unless you're selling unique items, since your town will just end up having worse prices than the big boys over there. So, this server is set up against you from the start. And if all that wasn't enough, this server also has major limitations on farms. They made it illegal to make any form of automatic mob farm requiring each mob to be killed manually. In addition to this, it is illegal to create automatic crop farms, so you have to rely on hand picking your crop. And if you thought you could just exploit villager trading halls, think again, because villagers simply don't exist. But I, being never one to shy away from a challenge, want to exploit the hell out of this server. And trust me, this server is not immune to my exploitation expertise. All the stuff I just outlined essentially makes it to where there is only one way for people on the server to really make any reasonable amount of cash, and that's through mining. Our first idea for getting rich was as simple as it gets, just mine. The problem is, we were complete noobs to the server compared to these guys that have been playing for many years. Meaning there's a better chance for me to lose my virginity than it is to actually catch up to them. What's our solution to this? Well, we brought in backup. No, no, not backup to help me lose my virginity, you dumbass. Backup to help me mine. Christ, keep up. So I pulled out my secret weapon, the old Skype contact list. I called up as many friends as I could, and we pulled all our money into one person, essentially quintupling our money gains. Now, having tons of friends to help me mine is a great start, but having this many people means we need an equally large amount of gear to maximize profits. There's only one way to get good gear, and that's of course through enchanting. And as luck would have it, I came across a triple cave spider spawner. I quickly put my 10,000 hours of Minecraft experience to use. I made my design, and by my design, I mean a Frankenstein monster mishmash tutorials from all over YouTube, and farmed up enough gear for everyone to have plenty of stuff. There was one issue that I failed to realize. If you remember, one of the rules that I outlined earlier was that you can't have mob grinders automatically kill any mobs. In my design, killed spiders that got stuck on the roof. Now, you would think this rule would only apply to farms that you actually get something from auto-killing the mobs. Whereas this is an XP farm, so not killing them manually has literally no gain for me. But of course, these mods have a hard-on for big-ass rule books, so they had to piss on our parade and destroyed our mob spawner. Needless to say, our group has already gotten on the mods watch list and have only been playing for like a week. Since our group lives in the gray area between the rules, this is not good. Going forward, we are going to have to keep our methods as covert as possible. After a full grueling week of mining, we finally had enough money to make a basic town. Thus, the luxurious town of Shroot Farms was founded. Migrate to our humble settlements on this beautiful, handcrafted ship. Settle down by purchasing one of our rustic, acorn-style houses that make you feel like you're living in a painting. Come down to the Black Rooster and relax as we treat you with unique beverages. 
and enjoy our free luxuries such as unlimited access to a huge farm, free dragon travel, as well as unlimited access to our bustling market filled to the brim with player-run shops. Look in awe at the castle that your great leader Chesticle resides in. But make sure to stay at least 50 feet from the entrance. Lord Chesticle doesn't want your dirty peasant feet lowering the value of the land. You can also enjoy unlimited access to our beautiful greenhouse where you can collect honey to your heart's content. And if you're into that, you can even get married in this beautiful chapel. Fight out your differences in this badass PvP arena. And all this for the low, low price of only 3,000 trade bars. In this server, it is incredibly hard to advance. Each rank becomes exponentially more expensive to purchase, normally taking someone literally six years to advance to the highest rank. Yes, we did the math. That's, count them, six years of grinding. Even accounting for our extreme speeds in comparison to normal plebeians that just stumble upon the server, it was still painfully slow. But we went to the drawing board and brainstormed a new plan. How can we make more money? Since passive income methods are banned on the server, we were left with only one option. Gold. Normally, gold is a relatively useless resource on most servers, but this one values it rather highly on the server shops. We can sell each gold ingot for a little over three trade bars, trade bars being the currency for the server. For context, one block of land is 30 trade bars, and you need 125,000 blocks to get the highest rank, meaning that we need to amass 3 million 750,000 trade bars to reach our goal of being one of the richest players on the server. That's almost 21,000 stacks of gold. However, we are pretty lucky people, and also pretty smart if I do say so myself. Luckily for us, there is one place that we can get stupid amounts of gold. That's the Mesa biome. In this biome, gold spawns at all Y levels, so we all got together and literally strip mined the entire biome. This catapulted us all the way to Duke, which needed 20,000 tiles, which for reference takes a normal player a little over six months of farming. But even this was still only a fraction of what we needed. Over the course of the month that we mined out this mesa biome, we realized that we had a major problem. We were running out of mesa. The world border in World of Elden is much smaller than most, and there was unfortunately only one singular mesa biome on the entire server. So once again, we go back to the drawing board. We knew there was three criteria that had to be met to have a great money-making method. One, we needed to have access to large amounts of the resource. Two, it needed to be infinitely renewable, so we don't run into another mesa problem. And lastly, it needed to be able to be sold quickly and efficiently, so we don't get bottlenecked trying to offload the goods. The only things that can be infinitely sold are server shop items. So we went on the World of Elden website and looked at the list of items that can be sold at player towns. Obviously we can sell mining materials, but those are out of the question since it would be too slow. Then there's different kinds of fish, which are pretty useless, but then we saw something interesting. Mushroom stew is sold at one trade bar per soup. Now that may not sound like a lot if you needed to farm the mushrooms by hand, but it would appear the server owners weren't aware of one fact when they set the sell price that high. You can milk a mushroom cow to get infinite stews. We did a little quick napkin math and found that since we only needed one bowl per mushroom stew, and one log created 3.25 bowls, and each mushroom stew makes one trade bar, that means that each log is equal to one entire gold bar. Yeah, you know what that means. We were making about one gold per 15 seconds mining in the mesa biome between all of us. In selling mushroom stews, we can make the equivalent of one gold for every single log chopped. And between all of us, that's one gold every 0.3 seconds of farming. To summarize, that puts us getting money at 300 times faster than the normal player 
And that's if they were mining in the Mesa, since it takes 3,750,000 trade bars to become the max rank, that's only 90 hours of farming to get the raw materials to become one of the richest players on the server. Yes, that's right, only 90 hours to have the same value of raw materials than someone mining for 12 hours a day for six years. Now we knew we had something truly special on our hands. But this plan isn't perfect. There was one major way this plan could go south fast. That's if the mods found out what we were doing. And due to our previous run-ins with them, we were on their naughty list. We knew since the mods on the server were extremely strict, it would be immediately patched if they found out how overpowered it is. There are a few different ways that they would potentially find out about this money-making method. One, they see our balances skyrocket and get suspicious. Two, they see us actively utilizing the method. And three, someone else finds the method and lets the cat out of the bag. OMG guys, I found epic money method. Two of those are in our control and should be pretty easy to hide. But the last one is a little bit more difficult. To make sure they didn't see our balance, we plan to do two things. One, we decided to not purchase land until we had all the balance we needed to max out our rank, since the mods manually handle land expansion tickets. And two, we would spread the money throughout all of our accounts so it wouldn't look suspicious. To avoid the mods or other players seeing our money-making methods, we resolved to hide the operation underground and would only sell to the shops during the lowest population times on the server, thus minimizing risk for other people figuring this out. Now that we have the outline for our plan, it's time to figure out the logistics. First, we need to actually find a mushroom cow, then transport it to our base without drawing attention. Secondly, we need to figure out the most efficient way to gather logs. Then we need to upgrade our town to have a server shop that buys mushroom stews. And lastly, we need to create a schematic for the machine that will be maximizing the efficiency of our stew farm. Tackling the first problem was actually super easy thanks to the server's dynamic map, which is just a culmination of everywhere the players have gone on the map. We simply went by boat to the mushroom island that we saw on the map and yoinked the cow and carted him back to base. Naturally, we came up with the only fitting name there is, Mummy Milkers. Next, we create an unassuming little shop stand and put in a ticket for them to put the NPC that we will be selling to. We put on our best little innocent faces and they were none the wiser to our schemes. Then we created an unassuming little trap door that led down to where we would be storing the mushroom cow. Okay, step one and two complete. Now let's find out how to get logs as fast as possible. Obviously, we could simply chop down the logs manually, but since we are absurdly greedy, we wanted to max Maximize every possible aspect to this plan, and there's no way in hell we are going to snoop down to farming normally after this discovery. Luckily though, we had a redstone genius in our group who in the past had created his own computer using only redstone. That's pretty badass. We tasked him with coming up with a tree farm design that used giant spruce trees and that was manually farmed since, as you know, the server mods are a bunch of shriveled up old scrotums and don't want anyone to have any fun on the server. Next up on the to-do list is the actual machine for creating the stews. You might think there isn't really much you can do to maximize efficiency, and you would be mostly right, but there is one thing we can do. We created a redstone repeater, hooked it up to some chests with some droppers, and dropped four bowls every single tick onto the person making the soups. Then that person has their inventory filled with bowls, making the soup automatically drop out of their inventory, and then another player has the shop inventory open, standing where the stews would be landing essentially spamming the sell button. This allows us to create soups and sell them as fast as we can click. I know I was supposed to keep everything a secret, but I couldn't help but boast just a bit in chat. I was talking to one of the richest players on the server and I told them in one month's time, I would be emperor, the best rank on the server. He, of course, laughed at me. Ha ha ha, that's fucking stupid. You'll never make that in a month. That shit took me nearly seven years. Since under normal circumstance, that would be completely impossible. But little did he know, I was built different than the average player. Okay, now that I boasted about our progress, we were on the clock, which really lit a fire under me, and we were more determined than ever. Then something bad happened. We noticed something in chat. It was our worst nightmare. I found the epic money-making method. 
just spam click cows lol, what do you mean xs? I mean mushroom cows just spam click and sell the soups. Someone had discovered the soup method and was talking about it in chat. The normal everyday player may have thought this situation was out of their hands, but we knew better. We were little rats, and since we have no moral compass, we would stop at nothing to keep our methods working. So we started trying to come up with a way that we can sabotage this person. Firstly, we started messaging them on Discord and getting information on how sophisticated their operation was. Luckily, they were super basic and only consisted of a cow in a shop. Then they made a massive blunder. They admitted to us right there in Discord that they were using an auto clicker to speed up their progress, something that was definitely a major violation of the service rules. We knew this was the perfect out we needed to hopefully gaslight the mods into thinking that it was the auto clicker that made the method overpowered and not the absorbent soup prices. So we did what any disgusting, dirty little capitalist rat would do. We went to the authorities and got our competition shut down. It worked like a charm. The mods took the bait and banned his ass. And it seemed they weren't worried at all about the suit prices, keeping the conversation focused squarely on him using an auto clicker. Okay, now all the pieces are in place. All we have to do now is execute the plan. Took a few days to get the tree farm set up, but we did it. Soon after, however, we realized that even with the super efficient tree farm, our progress would still be bottlenecked at the log gathering process. I did the math, and if we continued at the current log gathering pace, there was no way we would hit the one month deadline. And I would have to eat my words and my pride. And I could not have that. Oh no. But let's see, how the hell do we get thousands and thousands of logs without any automatic farms? Well, let's look at how the businesses in real life get a hold of large amounts of resources at extreme speeds for cheap. Exploiting the impoverished people for cheap labor, of course. So we put out ads all over the server boasting extremely high prices for logs. We made sure to be buying logs just barely above what you would make mining, ensuring every single poor soul would be clamoring to get a hold of logs to sell to us, thinking they were getting some kind of amazing deal. Little did they know, we were making shitloads of money on their naivete. Now, of course, purchasing logs did cut into our profits a bit, but it was still much more profitable than manually gathering them. Pretty soon, we had a literal supply chain of logs where we had every single new player employed under the Shroot Farms Corporation. In absolutely no time at all, we hit maximum efficiency, and we were gaining logs as fast as we could use them in a never-ending cycle of ass tons of money. We were getting and selling soup as fast as I could click. I can click at about 10 times per second, which means I was making 36,000 trade bars an hour, minus log prices. We did the math and that came out to roughly 150 hours of farming. We had 14 days left before our deadline, meaning to hit it we would have to grind 10 hours a day. Luckily though, I have absolutely no life, so that was not a problem at all. And there you have it. Just before the deadline, we did it. We did what was thought to be impossible just a few months ago. We had enough money spread out between all of our accounts to purchase enough land to become one of the richest players to ever play on the server in its 10 year life cycle. But our happiness was short lived. You see, unbeknownst to us, shortly after we purchased the land, the mods became suspicious and had a hunch that we obtained the funds using dubious methods. They soon found our little underground operation, and one day we tried to log in and were met with this message. They banned every single one of the players in our group. Yup, we flew too close to the sun this time, and we got burned. Our need to excel at ludicrous speeds finally bit us in the ass, and man did that bite draw blood. For the last three and a half months, my entire life was consumed by this server, and the moment I achieved my ultimate goal, it was ripped away from me. 
Now, if you think this will stop us from exploiting every possible money-making method in every server we play on, you would be sorely mistaken. If I'm being honest, even though all our progress was ripped away from us, I probably wouldn't have played on the server anymore after that since our goals were accomplished. So anyway, that's the story of how I destroyed a 10-year-old Minecraft server's economy using the lowly mushroom stew. We have plenty of other stories and adventures on all kinds of other servers, so if you want to see more of this type of content, let me know down in the comments section and I will be sure to make more. But for now, you'll just have to wait with bated breath for my next upload, which I'm sure all of you are going to do since your only purpose is to watch my glorious content.